This meeting will come to order. Good evening, everyone. This, this is a regular meeting of the planning board. First item on the agenda is the approval of minutes from the June 8th regular meeting. May I have a motion to approve these minutes? Yes, move. Second. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Are there any uh, additions, corrections, addenda? All those in favor of approval say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Those minutes are approved. This evening, there are uh, there is no correspondence to receive, nor are there any continuances. So the next item for business is item 4A, a public hearing, request of Hearts Roofing and Construction on behalf of Beachside Holdings, LLC, for waivers from certain design standards of the Middletown Rules and Regulations regarding the subdivision and development of land section 521, for a proposed renovation of an existing commercial building located at 43 Quidneck Avenue, Assessors Platt, 116 NW, Lot 29. And the public hearing on this item is still open. There's someone here to speak on this item. Please identify yourself. Scott Lyons of uh, Beach Liquors. Um, at the last meeting, uh, we gave feedback to the contractor asking if um, the applicant would consider using a different material rather than vinyl. Yep. Uh, can you fill us in? Sure. On yeah, I've spoken to Mr. Hart. Uh, we've looked at our options and we are in agreement that we are willing to uh, switch over to Hardy board uh, rather than, um, and especially since the price of vinyl just skyrocketed, we can do it for the same price. So everybody's happy. So instead of the vinyl, you'll be using uh, hardy plank? Correct. Um, any questions? Uh, Just on the front of the building? like uh, The entire building. The whole building's going to be done? That's great. That's very good. Thank you for it's desperately that. needed. <laughs> so may I have a motion? I'll make a motion uh, to approve the waiver. Second. So we have a motion made and seconded to approve the waiver for um, non-traditional material. With the condition that you will use hardy plank instead of the vinyl. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Are they all going to be this easy tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. The next item on the. Oh. I'm sorry, I, I forgot to close the public hearing. Is uh, do we have to so go moved. back and just make a motion to close it? So moved. I think it's de facto closed, so I think you're okay. Oh, since you're okay. okay, thank you. As sorry say, about that. Horses out of the barn. Well, we were so excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the shock really. I was expecting that. The next item is item five A, public hearing, request of St. George's School for development plan review and requests for waivers from certain provisions of section 521 of the Middletown rules and regulations regarding the subdivision and development of land for construction of a wellness center addition to the existing field house building on property located at 372 Purgatory Road, Tax Assessors Plat 121 SW Lot 39. I have a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Second. Motions made and seconded to open the public hearing. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Public hearing is open. Uh, who will be speaking for the applicant? Good evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm Bob Pipe. I'm the athletic director at St. George's, and I'm just going to introduce the project. And then we have the um, architects here that will certainly get into the nitty gritty that I think you'll be more concerned about. Um, so we, we, we're, this is a wellness center. Um, it's going to be part um, athletics at um, a weight room. Right now, our weight room is, you know, we moved it twice now. It was in a very small area and it was separated between cardio and weights. We moved it into our field house. Um, where it takes up a basketball court now. And now we've been lucky enough to, to hopefully um, bring it outside and have its own independent um, building where we'll have all the weight room and the cardio and everything will be there for the kids access and our community access. 
Um, and this is really important for our kids, but not just the kids. I mean, it's just our community in general um, to have a much better space to be able to, um, to go to, to get some fitness and some uh, exercise. Also in that space, we're going to have our athletic trainers room, which is now a, a, a smaller and, and, you know, deep into our athletic center. And this will bring it up to, right up to the fields. Um, we're much closer for access to the kids and our playing surfaces indoors, our gym and our, our swimming pool, what have you. So um, we're excited about it. And again, uh, I appreciate you guys, everybody listening and um, spending the time and effort on this. So architects, we'll take it over. Yeah. Thank you very much. Good evening. I'm John Staubach from VHB. I'm the civil engineer on the project. And um, Ron, can you move to the next slide? Uh, our project site is in the northwest corner of the campus on that box in red. Uh, you can see the, the proposed addition uh, goes on to the, uh, the northeast corner of the, uh, the field house building and uh, will provide direct access to the athletic fields to the east. We've had several meetings prior to this hearing tonight. Um, we had a review meeting with the Public Works Committee. Um, we also had a, a pre-application meeting uh, with um, town engineer and uh, town planner and building official. Um, and we had a walkthrough this morning with the Public Works Committee. Uh, one of the items that they had of concern was the, um, actually, let me move a little bit further in, my, in the presentation. I'll explain the drainage system, and then I'll go through the concerns and comments that they had. Can you move to the next slide? Uh, this shows the site layout in a little bit more detail. Um, the view on the left uh, shows the full extent of the field house, and the view on the right is a zoom in, and you can see. John, we need, we need you to have the mic. Got it back there. Show. Here's the field house and enlargement showing the addition. Um, it's two levels, the upper level being the spaces that Bob just spoke to you about, the athletic trainer and the exercise equipment room. Uh, the lower level is mechanical equipment. There's a corridor between the field house and the wellness center. Um, we are replacing the sidewalk going into the entry for the facility, reusing the existing uh, entrance vestibule. Um, we are capturing all the runoff from the front of the facility and directing that into a bioretention system. It's a very shallow system, about 18 inches deep, treat the runoff from, from this area. In addition to that, on the north side of the addition, we have a new uh, detention system, underground detention system. We're collecting all the runoff from the field house building. We've installed some new area drains down in this area. In case you're not familiar with it, the field is, is um, about 10 feet higher than this elevation down below at the field house. So it slopes down the hill. And then we have drainage at the bottom of the hill collecting all of that runoff. Ron, can you move back to the last slide? So from that point with our project area, um, we tie into the existing drainage system, it wraps around the field house building and discharges into this detention system that was built with the athletic fields. That overflows into the adjacent detention system that has vegetation that's grown up in the, in the detention area. We met this morning with the Public Works Committee, the town engineer, and reviewed that area. And that detention system is 2.25 acre feet. So it's a fairly large system, holds about four feet of water in a hundred years. And what we found is that uh, some of the, the inlet structure and the outlet control structure, the inlet structure being here and here, and the outlet control structure being at the northwest corner of that detention system, had vegetation growing around it that really needs to be pruned back so that 
the school can access it and maintain it. No sediment buildup at all in there, but as a result of that meeting this morning, um, that was the recommendation. Turn around the inlet and outlet control structure and that the vegetation in the pond would stay. That vegetation stabilizes the pond and it's also uh, takes up a very minimal volume of the, the total volume in that pond itself and have any detrimental downstream impact by remaining in the pond. Slide. Slide. So you can see in a little bit more detail here how our, our drainage system works. Uh, the addition is right here. This view is a little different orientation. North is to the far right. The uh, field house is, is top of the page. We've rerouted the existing drainage around the addition. That's the, the roof runoff from the um, athletic facility. Had this new bioretention area, capturing and treating the front lawn and sidewalk. And then the roof of the Wellness Center addition pitches to the back. We capture that with roof drains, tie that into system here on the north side of the building into a detention system where we are able to uh, mitigate all of the um, stormwater from the project and uh, reduce the rate of runoff for all storms from the two to the 100 year storm. You can see there's our, our two, 10, 25, 100 year storm. We all have decreases. We have a slight increase on the one year storm, and that's not a requirement to address the increase there. Um, but we have uh, captured that and we're treating it in the bioretention area. The point of analysis here is also at the north end of the of the field house, by the time it gets around, goes through the two detention, it can be immeasurable what the, uh, the slide. <coughs> I'm gonna pass it on to Rob Douglas uh, from Boyd McTavish Architects. Hi, I'm Rob Douglas. Bon? Yeah. I'm Rob Douglas from Boyd McTavish Architects. Um, we're the architects of record for the project. Um, and uh, I believe most of you were at the walkthrough on Monday. I um, apologize for not being there, but the the main intention of the building really is to to provide as much of a uh, much clear glass um, as possible between the training facility and the field side. That was actually one of how you were working out inside, out on the field with. The Imagine yourself back. It also allows the trainers to have a good as it leaves the existing. I did essentially a little hyphen of of brick material materiality wise um, matching the rest of the building. Polished concrete blocks, so they're they're are in in effect. The bulk of the waivers we're asking for really are about um, the materiality of this building, um, which has a lot to do with the response to the schools, the, the, our, our design response to the school's need. That idea of transparency and connection. Ron, would you mind going to the next slide? Um, so this was a quick rendering that we did just as a design tool. Um, to share with you that gives a little bit of a sense of why, uh, how, the, how the building um, sits on the, <clears throat> site in relationship to the other components. Um, the other thing about that monofit roof um, that the school is really interested in and excited by is that on the far side of the fields behind us in this rendering is another monofit that's on the academic building. It was built in about 10 years, 15 years. Um, that it very much mirrors across the um, 
across the fields and helps create a place between the on the next slide please um this is the west side so we're showing this to you, to you just to let you know. um this face field house so no aspect Not at this side, um, but it's that same concrete block. But this is the north side of the building, so mostly concrete block. One thing we haven't really pointed out: there's a small covering that, um, lack of a better word, it's essentially a carport. It's a place that allows um, Bob to bring his golf carts in that they use to both to transport water and ice and all. Um, they needed a place for that to be placed under cover and easily accessible. That's the terms of use. Occupants of use. But this is just a, <clears throat> most of this image is actually um, inside the, the existing lobby, which is going to get a little. Finish roofs. Could you, could you talk uh, more closely? Sure, sorry, sorry. Uh, this is mostly looking at the wellness center inside lobby. Um, and then this this portion of it is the south facade. So it's um, the Omni block, which is the burnished block I've been telling you about. Plate panel engraved with the school's logo. Glass at the corner there, just like it is at the north side. Ron, I think that's it. Is there another slide? Um, so I think I'm um, sure you have questions. Comments. Questions from members of the planning board. Yes. Bill and then oh, oh, and then Bill. Hmm. Uh, this board, as long as I've been on it, has been waging a generally unsuccessful fight for certain standards of architectural uh, perfection, I would call it. And I'm really surprised and disappointed to see this approach to this building. Because if anything, when people come here, anywhere from the world, they remark on the iconic way St. George's looks. People come here to paint it. And I was hoping maybe that part of what that Gothic chapel represents could be mimicked here in other, this building particularly. And I find the window uh, waiver, uh, materials waiver particularly uh, disturbing. And, uh, and I'm not an architect, so I don't know about the roof thing, but I, that's just my opinion. And I, and the way I phrase it all the time, every time we put a new building up, we have an opportunity to do something special. And I, I, for my take on this, it deviates from what I, I think the St. George's tradition has been in, in building. So, so I can give you a little bit of background on the thought process if that helps you at all. Um, the school, um, one of the things they did uh, was actually visit a number of other athletic facilities and their peer competitor schools. Um, they're looking at what those standards are on other campuses. And although I don't advocate for them to be following other schools all the time, I think St. George's is better than that. Um, I do think that was some aspect of it. I also think there's some aspect of, of um, on which it's, it's a little bit donor driven in terms of the, the person who was interested in actually funding this work is who's, who's able to, to fund this work um, has a pretty clear vision project should be. Um, that very much has to do with that. Well, that's my two cents, so it's there. Bill? Yeah, thanks. So just to touch on that, um, yeah, I don't generally disagree with you, Art. Um, my only, I mean, the, the architecture at St. George's is pretty uh, unique in and of itself. There's a lot of different styles there for sure, and this is just one more. Uh, but I, I think more if it were more visible from the public view, I'd be more inclined to say let's 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 go back to the drawing board, but it's it is on campus. And I guess public would be there to see games and whatnot, but generally it doesn't concern me too much. Uh, my only question um, was something that I brought up at the site visit, 
and I, and I assume that the fire department sat in on the TRC, not that it would have come up, but that, that alley in the back and relative to a locked gate, obviously that will come up at building permit time. Just make sure that they're aware of that. The, the that gate is designed so that it's egress only um, to stop students from going back there and messing around or whatever students do. Um, but it's always allowed. Act, so that, that allows free access. Understood. Yeah, I just wanted to make that point and that uh, obviously building and fire codes will be will be studied, will be um, reviewed under the plan review when the assuming the building is uh, permitted. But other than that, I support the project. Thank you. The comments from the planning board. Go. I'm curious, yeah. where's the uh, right. equipment, you know, HVAC and so forth going to be located for this building? Ron, can you pull up? Uh, any of the plans I can point to. Site plan. Yeah, the site plan would be good. Right here actually would be great. Um, the exterior portion of the HVAC equipment's right here, sort of tucked behind the building so that it, there's really- So it's gonna be ground mounted and, and hidden? Most, there's, most of it's actually inside the building. Oh, all right. So it's just basically the air handler that's outside. Another small piece of- that's pad mounted back here, but um, so that's at that lower elevation and tucked around on that west side. Other comments, BJ? I was just going to say, I'm very impressed with the detail that you all have done at St. George's and it's nothing less than I would expect from that school. I've always felt very highly about it. I'm very impressed with all the effort gone into the uh, the uh, the drainage uh, and things like that. I also feel that because of the location of this, I understand how Art feels, and I do agree with him most of the time, but I don't think that this will interfere with because of the location of the building. I don't think there's any uh, reason to be concerned about that. The other comments? Uh, I have a couple of comments. Um, I want to echo um, what Art said about the design of the facility. Uh, but I agree with Bill and BJ that given its location, no one's going to see it from any street. So if that's what uh, St. Yeah. George's wants, so be it. You mentioned that one reason you did that design was because the funder had a certain vision. I would appreciate it, uh, and this applies to everyone who comes before the planning board, if the funder also had knowledge of the town's ordinances. Uh, you, you and I are on the same page about that. <laughs> the other uh, question that I was going to ask, I will still ask it. Um, when I was looking at the uh, uh, the layout, I noticed that there were two very large trees that were labeled to be removed. One had a seven foot diameter, which is pretty remarkable. And the other had a five foot diameter, which is still a very big tree. We like to retrain, uh, retain large trees. Uh, however, at the site visit, they were gone. They were already removed. Could you comment on that? Uh, the school made that decision. Um, Bob, do you have any comment on that? I, I know one of them was in actually really poor condition. Um, it was going to have to be taken. Was out. that the larger or the smaller? I believe that was the smaller one. That was. I, I, I will. Yeah. If you're going to speak, please come to the mic. That 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 one, the smaller one, was taken out a few months prior. So when, where we were at the site visit, if you're facing the field house, it was to the left. Okay. Correct. That one was a little. That smaller. was the the five foot diameter one, but the seven foot one was in good shape. When they cut it open, when they took it down, it was not. The inside was was dead. Hollow. Yes, but you I mean didn't look it, but it was. And I think they made a decision that to do this building to try to build around that, they were worried about it being dead or not in great shape. So if they built around it and it didn't work, it was going to die anyways. And so I think that was again the process behind that. It, it was not an easy decision. It had a lot of input. There, there are about a dozen design options on the cutting room floor that 
couldn't work for one reason or another um, that were focused on trying to save that tree. We, we really did stand on our heads trying to figure it out, um, including a number of designs that were sort of built really tight up against the field house, which uh, I think would have created a, its own set of um, significant problems for the school down Okay. Um, just right. to comment, okay. I Go ahead. kind of went through that, not, not to bring up the previous projects, but as I was walking there, the previous project, there were some trees there in question as well. And they did, they did suggest they were trying to save them. As it turns out, it didn't yeah. look like we were able to save them, but um, happens. I mean, we didn't make it a condition, right? But, but I, no, I no, no, yeah. They yeah. want to save, they save. They are putting up one tree. The tree to the left, the smaller one. We are going to plant another tree in that spot. To, to, you know, obviously, will not be five foot in the neighbor. You know, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but we are going to try to replace the trees. So, yeah, I know as we were clearing the faculty housing site, George Staples was walking the site with the arborist, trying to make sure that any of the trees that are on that site that could be. Any other comments from the planning board members? Is there anyone in the public who would like to speak? Is there anyone on? No one online. No one online. Anyone? We have a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. And the motion is made and seconded to close the public hearing. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Public hearing is closed. Uh, may I have a motion uh, to um, approve the development plan review subject to the condition of the appropriate pruning in the detention basin. And are there any others, Ron? There's just, just that one condition. So maintenance of the detention or stormwater management system in, in accordance with the town engineer. And all of the waivers. And you've got uh, four waiver requests and of course the findings of fact. Okay, so may I have that motion, please? So moved. Second. Motion is made and seconded to uh, approve this project Subject to conditions, including the waiver requests. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Who's nay? Nay. The motion passes 6 1. Thank you. Thank you, guys. What's that? Uh, all right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next item on the agenda is item 5B, Silvera Irrevocable Trust, request for final plan approval for two lot subdivision of land fronting on Wapping Road and located approximately two tenths of a mile north of the intersection of Wapping Road and Peckham Avenue. Assessors plant 128 lot 74. Someone here to speak? Just please, members of the board, Mr. Chair. Uh, good evening. My name is Josh Morrow. On behalf, Can you speak into the microphone, please? On behalf of uh, Principi Engineering and our client here, Tom Silvera, um, just to reiterate a bit of this project um, you know, from our last meeting here, we had a few comments. Um, we have a two lot minor subdivision, um, plat. 128, lot 74. Um, our goal here is just to show that uh, we can sub subdivide, excuse me, um, a lot off of that fully compliant and potentially self-sufficient, um, compliant with zoning regulations. Um, and um, furthermore, to address the comments from our last meeting, um, we do have a overall survey plan of the entire lot 74 just to show um, the full accumulation of abutters, dimensions, um, and that is signed and stamped by John Barker. I have some hard copies here um, for you guys, um, and I'm open to hearing any further comments, um, questions about this project. I don't want to reiterate too, too much here. Okay. Questions from planning board members? The questions seems to fit in with our rules. Go ahead, BJ. Seems to fit in with our rules and regulations. 
comments bill yeah, just ron is it well, why are we saying final plan i mean is it but we did not didn't we you could have done this administratively or well that's up to the board um the board could have voted to give me the authority to grant final plan approval but that didn't happen yeah. plus there was a condition on the preliminary plan about providing that overall which i put on the screen oh, the yeah, overall okay. property boundary to get a better feel yeah, um, yeah. for where this right. all sits so that was um that condition has now been satisfied okay i remember that thank you yeah so well, aside from that the only the only other issue um and i think this is carrying over from preliminary is uh, a recommended condition of approval that the fire department sign off at the time of building uh construction that there's adequate access that one recommended condition of approval thank you ron any other comments from planning board members mm -hmm. i have a motion to approve the final plan application so move second. second motion is made and seconded <laughs> to approve this final plan application are there any particular special conditions or just that one can there's one condition on the memo so that one condition and then the findings of fact okay subject to the one condition and the findings is there any further discussion all those in favor say aye 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 opposed nay motion passes thank you thank you one sorry one per meeting one but Next item on the agenda is item 5C, request of Peter Gallipo, developer of Saltwood Farm subdivision for extension of planning board approval of subdivision phases three and four, and for the planning board to set the amount of performance security for phases three and four, property identified as assessor's plan 126, lot number four. And for the um, information of the planning board members, uh, just prior to the meeting, Ron gave me this memo. Uh, it's a memo to Ron from Warren Hall with the amount for phase four. And the amount of, uh, of the, the bond amount is 76,000 and we have to add 25%. So the amount for phase four would be $95,000. So you've got two requests before you tonight. Um, the first being the extension of the approvals for phases three and four um, to the end of the end of January, I guess, January 29th or uh, January 31st, which January 31st, sorry. Um, so that's that's a one vote. And then the second consideration, as you just said, is for the bonding amount um, in the memo and on the agenda it talks about bonding for phases three and four. Um, but the town engineer has recommended not proceeding with setting a bond amount for pay, for phase three at this point. Um, there's still some concerns and some ongoing work um, that he wants to get a better handle on, but he's comfortable with proceeding with the bonding of phase four with that amount of, uh, with the 25% additional of $95,000 um, being the total bond amount for phase four. By setting that bond and once Mr. Gallopo posts the bond with the town, he would be then allowed to record phase four of the subdivision plan, which allows him to begin marketing those lots. Um, I think there's two lots involved in phase four. Um, phase three, he would still not be able to sell those lots until either the work is complete and the town signs off on it or a bond amount is set and then posted for phase three. Okay, so let's deal with the first item first. Um, we have a motion to um, extend the time period for recording the final plan for subdivision phases three and four to January 31st, 2023. So motion moved. Motion made here. Seconded. Motions made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Uh, motion passes uh, and the extension is granted. Uh, now may I have a motion uh, to set the uh, uh, bond amount for phase four to $95,000. Motion made. Second. second. Motion is made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion passes.
that takes care of that item. Next item on the agenda. Thank you. Uh, the next item is item 6A, the status report. Does anyone have any comments on the status report? I have a comment on item uh, number four, but give me a minute. I can't read my writing just yet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, this is this has to do with the uh, build out study, and I, I was wondering if um, if the board could get a report on all fronts of that of the recommendations that we made, just a, a status report on all of them, sure. just so we know what's going on. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Any other any other comments or questions on the uh, um, the project status report? Okay. Committee reports, use table and parking subcommittee. So there's nothing right now on that, Ron, now that we have some. Now that we have some assistance in the office, oh. we can talk about scheduling the subcommittee. Okay, Fine so, with that. so you can uh, move forward again with that. Very good. Uh, tree commission. Uh, just the ongoing maintenance of the planting of the trees and uh, taking in, uh, I think there were 30 trees that were bought with the funds that the commission will be reimbursing the, uh, the various um, uh, moors. And I think that maybe just one for Kempenas. Okay, any questions on that? Uh, open space and fields? Uh, the committee had uh, invited uh, the Van Buren uh, Charitable Trust uh, group uh, to talk about uh, uh, island-wide bike paths. You know, what's, what, what's in the process and how eventually to uh, have a plan to, uh, together to see how we can connect all together and have an, an island-wide island -wide bike path. Great. Questions? Thank you. Conservation Commission? Uh, yes, we met uh, this past Monday night here in Chambers, um, our July meeting. Uh, three areas that we covered uh, was an ongoing discussion of the invasive species uh, and the conversation and the meeting focused on continuing public ed engagement on that. Second item we covered was the election of Conservation Commission officers, and that took all about 90 seconds and uh, no change. Chairman, Vice Chair, and Secretary all remain unchanged. And then the third item that we spent time on was a discussion of the Conservation Commission's role relative to, you know, the, the process as it comes before planning, TRC, master plan, preliminary, all that stuff. There's some correspondences that'll be going back and forth with Ron and the chairman of the Conservation Commission. And those, I've given Ron a little bit of a heads up, need to be kind of worked through, I would say over the next 30 days. I think you're gonna be invited to the next Conservation Commission meeting or maybe Peter, oh, your input would be helpful. Uh, so we had, a, uh, we had a meeting Monday night with no items on the agenda other than election of officers, and we're here for an hour and a half. So <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a rather robust discussion about some other things, you know. So I was going to say, I, I uh, at one time I was a member on the conservation commission, I and mean, you might maybe again. <laughs> so Be careful what you wish for. That, that beats everything <laughs> I had to went through. <laughs> Anyways, that's the update there. Hey, thank you. Any any questions for Joe? Boy, Joe, good for you. Uh, affordable housing. <clears throat> the uh, focus remains uh, consistent as it has been with uh, primarily looking at senior housing, uh, which 
I've not been able to pry them off that yet, but I will. And they're looking at the elephant site and the senior center. So having said that on that, uh, I know next month so soon we're going to see the Mescalela project come back for discussion again <clears throat> for this use. <clears throat> and I think everybody's enthusiastic about the West Main project because there certainly is an opportunity there for affordable housing as that gets uh, West, West Main received the tax credits, by the way. Yeah. yeah. So that'll move along. And once things are set legally and financially, yeah, that will be good. Yeah. Um, why? Um, they've been talking about elephant and the and the other one for a long time what's well it's cemented turmoil and uh the, the, the design standard is there going to be townhouses is it going to be you know there's other things there about it that's they're still working towards yeah a, they're working towards something, something. okay very good any questions for art um Upcoming meetings, we have our next regular meeting on August 10th. You are on the process of scheduling one for the Mesalella. Right. So where we stand with that, there were two dates um, based on the polling where it looked like we were going to have five or six members of this board available in August. So I gave those two dates. Um, I believe it was the 4th and the 31st. So the, I gave those two dates to the applicant and I'm awaiting response as to which date is gonna work for them. Of course, we're getting to the point now where we're beyond the ability to advertise for the August 4th date. So it looks like the only option for a special meeting in August would be the 31st. So you may just wanna pencil that in, but I'm still awaiting confirmation from the applicant that they can get their team together um, for that meeting. If if not, and, and assuming, and I, and I believe this is true, that both the applicant and the board wanna do that in a special meeting, so I won't put this on the August regular meeting agenda. I'll wait and perhaps we'll be looking into September for scheduling a special meeting, but I'll keep you posted. Okay, great. Do we anticipate uh, a similar approach to what we saw before? Is that kind of what we're going to see? Or Mesalella? Is it going to be the same idea? Same? Yeah, okay. yeah. It, it's just more detail. So um, it's the same number of units, basically the same building design, the same site design. Um, it's just that there's more engineering that's now been completed. Okay, so he'll have to get in the queue again for the uh, financial part of it, I He's, suppose. Yeah, I mean, that's that's up to him, but I, I know that they're working continuously um, on the funding options. Yeah. Okay. Does he, uh, go ahead, Mike. Um, does he have to go before the uh, technical review committee, you know, to discuss things oh, like yeah. the uh, storm water and yes. yep. stuff like that? Yep. Will that be available for this uh, meeting? Will, will that type of... Uh, It'll, information be available for the special meeting yes yeah okay. i've actually got that on the agenda for the technical review committee later this month okay so um which you know may or may not finish the review at that meeting but it's it certainly will go through the trc and you'll as a board get a memo or at least some recommendations from the trc uh bill did you have a comment? i just have one item not on this not on this uh, other comments on this Okay. Go ahead. Bill. Yeah. So before we close, um, for a future meeting potentially. Uh, so if you if you recall, some of the I think we were all on the on the board at that point. We pat we worked on an ordinance relative to residential fire sprinklers yeah. uh, and giving uh -huh. incentives. Yeah. Uh, going forward. So I think I mentioned it last meeting, or maybe I mentioned it just to Paul. One of the groups I'm in, I'm I'm involved in would like to come. Uh, and make a presentation to the board. It's about a 15 minute, 20 minute presentation. What it is, it's a virtual reality uh, side by side burn. Uh, one, a, a, a unit, Paul knows what I'm talking about, maybe some of you as well, where they, they have um, typically it happens at around the, uh, around the country where, where we'll demonstrate the effectiveness of residential fire sprinklers uh, versus uh, not having them. And this, this is a, a, a program that has been funded to allow for uh, a virtual reality. So they actually filmed a side-by-side -side burn. And what it is, is I, I believe there's 20 setups. It's a, it's a you'd, you'd wear, we'll, we'd be wearing goggles and uh, be in the middle of a side-by-side -side burn. And then a small presentation on the, the benefits of, of um, residential sprinklers and and including them as part of your ordinances and regulations. And we tried to do that 
uh, several years ago, and we got we made some steps forward, and we're a little bit further along than some communities. But I'd like to see us at least uh, give this group an opportunity to present to us, and maybe we can have a discussion about maybe strengthening approaching the council and strengthening our residential sprinkler incentives for developers. So. Uh, I guess what I'm asking is if the board would allow me to work with Ron on finding a, an appropriate date to make a, a short presentation to the board. And I, at that point, like I said, there's 20, I think 15, I, mean, I think there's up to 20 goggles, uh, actual units. Um, it's a two minute, it's a two or a three minute virtual reality sitting your seat and you have the goggles on and it, it goes through both, both aspects of a side-by-side -side burn, one with sprinklers, one without. And then there's a discussion and a presentation on how to include that into your ordinances. If I can work with Ron on finding an appropriate date for that to make a presentation, invite maybe people beyond some of the fire department, maybe, maybe even some council people if they're interested in seeing what, uh, what this might do. I, I would strongly endorse that. I'm a big fan of residential sprinklers. Uh, what, I, what I would uh, request is that you um, avoid a meeting with a large agenda. <laughs> And yeah, maybe may, maybe even consider a special meeting for it, where this is the only thing that's on the agenda. I think they'll only take a half an hour of our time. I really do. I don't think it'd be much. No. Much longer. I mean, that, but that might be a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That Mike? might also include the town engineer and the zoning board as well. Whomever, I think we didn't we'd invite anybody who is willing to understand it, and learn. That might be why a special meeting. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah. Maybe I'm we fine to do work, that. work with. I'm it's okay. Yeah, well, I think it's okay so. with me. It makes sure the yeah. zoning board. Well, I'll work with that. Thank you. Any other comments, Art? Uh, <clears throat> several months ago, I think the, my memory co uh, is correct. We voted seven zero that uh, ARPA funding be provided for a project to get uh, public water on the east side of our town. Um, that's somewhere out <clears throat> in space, or is it uh, recorded? Is uh, the council <laughs> received all of the requests, including the planning board's request? Um, they are in the process of considering how to spend what remains of the ARPA money. My understanding based on recent budget discussions is that much of the ARPA funding is gonna be going to the school department and to address their budgetary issues. And I don't know mm -hmm. at this point, what if any ARPA, ARPA funding is gonna remain for all of the other hundred plus um, proposals that were put to the council, but ultimately it's up to the town council to make that decision. Okay. Thanks, Art. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. Any other comments before we adjourn the meeting? I have a motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Second. Motion's made and seconded to adjourn the meeting. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Meeting's adjourned. <laughs>